In this episode, we're talking the D23 Expo 2022 up next. Hey everybody, welcome aboard to another episode of Orange Grove 55, where today we're going to be talking about D23 Expo 2022. It's coming up, it's coming up, but before we dive into everything today, I want to introduce my amazing guest, friend of the channel, friend, uh, compadre, uh, <laughs> family man, um, Mr. George. George, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. Glad to be back on the channel and, uh, Ready to talk some D23, one of my yeah. specialties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you are D23. You're the Disney family man, <laughs> 23. <laughs> but uh, let's dive into some D23 Expo. This is interesting. So the other day, I think it was yesterday, and I'll share your screen. You were, you have the pricing up. Yes. They dropped the pricing tiers for everything. Gold member, general member, hall, you know, the hall, the D23 hall, preferred seating. Um, now, I admittedly have only been to D23 one time, and that was in 2019. That's where I met you, George, actually. Um, that, was a, that was a fun day. That was a fun day. Um, but I only went one time. You're more of a regular with the D23 Expo. In terms of these prices, is this pretty comparable to years past? I think based off of everything that's been going on and the Expo finally coming back um, for us Disney fans... After looking at this, it is pretty reasonable, honestly, believe it or not. I mean, compared to what it, it used to be, because um, Disney used to have the uh, the Sorcerer tickets or the Sorcerer package, which each, every other year for the Expo, they would um, up the price. So it started at, I believe, the very first Sorcerer, I think it was $1,000 just for one ticket. And what the Sorcerer package allows you to do is it guarantees you um, seating at any presentation, at any panel, at any event that's going on within the three days of uh, the expo. Now, this year, they're not doing the Sorcerer package, but they do have the Hall D23 preferred seating pricing, which is the, um, the purple tier on the right side. Okay. And it's a uh, D23 gold member um, only. If you are a D23 gold member or gold family member, you are um, able to access the $899 for the three-day ticket that is preferred seating at Hall D23 only. This is not including the other panels that are in other exhibits. This is just for the big... Um, uh, presentations in Hall D23 surrounding the three-day ticket. Now, I do know that uh, they are also doing a Visa uh, cardholder um, preview for uh, people to purchase uh, D23 tickets the day before, which tickets go on sale January 20th. But for Visa ca cardholders, they get an early access on January 19th but that does not include the preferred seating pricing. Interesting. That's only just for the mm -hmm. the, uh, the three day ticket or or just the one day ticket. Which I actually am very surprised that they're not doing a two day. It's either just the one day or the three day. That is kind of odd. That is kind of odd. Yeah, uh, that, that is kind of odd. Now this three day ticket, the eight ninety nine with the uh, with the D twenty three gold member. Mm -hmm. What was that? The last. What was that? The last D23 was that was it? You said that was like over a thousand. So has that has that gone down in price? Well, the thing is with the Hall D23 preferred seating, they never had this particular option. It was oh, just okay. the sorcerer ticket, which oh, covered okay. everything. Gotcha, so, gotcha. But but up until I say the last time, it was like at twenty five hundred per ticket. Oh my God. So wow. for eight ninety nine to have guaranteed seating at Hall D23, which those are like the big major events is rep for three days that's really not that bad if you really break it down <clears throat> that's not that that's actually not that bad at all now will you be getting tickets to this year's expo if you can yes i'm actually gonna 
uh, attempt to go. And I'm actually going to try for the, uh, the preferred seating. I do know just like with the sorcerer tickets, um, I was fortunate enough to do the, the first sorcerer ticket holding at the 2011, uh, D23 expo. That's when they first premiered it. Um, but other than that, I haven't gotten no luck since because it's either the price is too high just for me, just because $2,500 for one ticket for a three day event, that's a Walt Disney world vacation. Right. <laughs> and right, yeah, but this price is reasonable. I may try for the, uh, the preferred seating. Hopefully if, uh, tickets, uh, if my computer doesn't crash, cause I know it always does with these events cause everybody's on at the same time and it crashes the server. And tickets are like sold within minutes. It's wild. It's going to be wild. It's always like that with Disney stuff. Like yeah. the, 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 the websites crash, the apps crash. It's always a mess. Um, demand is super high, but I think also it's a Disney system issue. Uh, they really need to bulk up their, their IT situation, you know? Um, but let's dive into some, some, some really fun stuff here with the D23 Expo. So let's cool. dive into what we what we're expecting from, from the park announcements. Let, let's start with that. Um, in terms of park announcements, and, and it can be anything, uh, George. I mean, if you want to talk Walt Disney World, Disneyland, international parks, whatever, what are you predicting are going to be some of the, like the big uh, park announcements for this expo? Well, as part of with my uh, 2022 prediction, I have this, I still have this funny feeling within the time difference of when there was speculation that they'll start announcing stuff for Disneyland forward. I don't know why. I just have, I have a gut feeling that especially with this being the centennial celebration of the 100 years of the company, what better way to move forward in the future with the parks than to announce Disneyland's overall yearly expansion that can go through decades through the next centennial. And right. that's what I believe that John, uh, Bob Chapek was mentioning that, you know, this was the first 100 years of the company. Now we're looking forward to the next 100 years. Well, that kind of ties in with Disneyland forward because they right. said this is not going to be a five or 10 year um, project. This is going to go on 30, 40, 50 years. So I, I have a, I have a gut feeling that, Disneyland Forward is going to maybe not get a whole lot of information as to specifics yet, but I think right. that's going to lay the groundwork that they're going to say this is what it's going to be. Yeah, I, I, I concur with you on that. I think that the timing is kind of perfect because we, we were told uh, in March that it was the, the, the approval process for Disneyland Forward could be, I think, 18 months or something along there. So that would be timeline wise. Uh, D23 would fall kind of perfectly um, in regards to the that that approval, and who knows? They might have already gotten the approval, and, and there's there has there just hasn't been an official announcement yet. We don't know. Yeah, because that's um, how Disney always is. They always are like one step ahead of the game, where they already have the answer, but right. then they just like to pick an appropriate date to make that announcement. Yeah, and, and they might work with the city of Anaheim to hold off on that announcement. Maybe maybe the mayor of Anaheim will come out on stage at the expo with like uh, you know Josh Demaro, and they make the big announcement, the the, the, the big you know uh, big pomp and circumstance. You know, yeah. it's possible, and I think that that would be very exciting. One of my big issues with D twenty three Expo. Because I'm all about the announcements. That that's my thing when it comes to these expos, and and really these these conventions in general. Even when it comes to like Star Wars celebration, things like that. And nine times out of ten, Disney disappoints me with stuff, like, especially Disneyland. You know, um, I think there was one expo where they really came through, and that was the 2015 when they announced Star Wars Land, Galaxy's Edge. You know, Bob Iger came out and said, we're not just building one, we're building two. Yeah. And that was a huge thing. That was great, you know. But most of the time, Disneyland doesn't really get much love. So I would like to see them buck that trend a little bit this year and, and give us that Disneyland forward. Give us something to really chew on. Now, you Florida uh, fans, you get a whole lot more when it comes to D23. It's the Walt Disney World show at the D23 yeah. Expo, for, by yeah. and large, you know. I agree. It, it really is. And I think maybe that's where this is where Disneyland's time to shine because 
with a with an ambitious project like Disneyland Forward, this now gives Disney the 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 I don't want to say the excuse, but right. to to put Disneyland into the spotlight again because there's really nothing too much that they could have done due to the the lack of space. But if Anaheim approves them all this land that they can build beyond what they already have, you know, they, they got some, some meat on those bones. Yeah. It'll be, it'll, I mean, the, the, the crowd would go nuts for something like that. And they don't have to really even give us much detail. It could basically just be like the, the mayor of Anaheim comes out with tomorrow and says, guess what guys, you know, we worked a deal out with the city and we're happy to announce Disneyland forward is moving forward. Uh, we're, you know, it's a huge expansion for the resort. We're going to expand California adventure. We're going to expand Disneyland. There's a lot of potential, a lot of opportunities. And I think that alone w- would really garner a lot of excitement. Now for your home resort, um, you know, uh, Walt Disney world, what, what any predictions for Walt Disney world for this expo in terms of announcements? Uh, for Walt Disney world, I think, um, we may possibly get if they don't announce it sooner. Um, but I do think that they're going to probably mention this during the um, the quarterly earnings meeting or the um, the shareholders meeting. There's there's one that's going to be on February 9th and the other is going to be on March 9th. And I, I, at the top of my head, I can't recall which one is which, but I think that's maybe what they may announce or if they wanted to hold off that we may finally get um, an opening date for Tron. Yeah. Um, Because we know that obviously it's still being built, but we don't have any idea what month, (laughs) what even year it's going to be completed. So they may want to use that opportunity to officially announce it because people are anticipating, you know, this, this roller coaster that's coming in from Shanghai. Um. But yeah, 20, 2022, we talked about this in our in our in our 2022 prediction video where we all kind of agreed that that Tron will probably open in 2022. You know, by the time the 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 D23 Expo comes around, I think it's this summer, there's only so there's only a few more months left in in the year. Um so that would kind of be an opportune time if they want to open it by the end of the year, the expo would be a perfect time to announce that opening date, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But I think overall if they want to make an announcement for the 100th anniversary for the company and you're going to include the parks with that, as far as Walt Disney World goes, now this may be going on a little bit far-fetched, but I think that they're going to not really announce smaller things. I think it's going to be one big giant announcement, and that's either an expansion of a land that's already previously there, a brand new land in one of the parks, or the long <laughs> rumored at uh, fifth gate. Oh, West. that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Fifth gate would be massive news. I think, I think there's a, yeah. Fifth gates, massive news. I think there's a, a high chance. Well, maybe I shouldn't say high chance, but a good chance that they announce another pavilion um, for world showcase at Epcot. That's, that's enough. That's another good assumption. I think when you're, when you're talking about the 100th anniversary celebration of not just film or television or music or the parks, you're talking about the whole entire company. I think what the parks division goes as far as like with the presentation and the panels, this isn't going to be individual projects that they're going to mention. Like we say, okay, well we're building Mickey and Minnie's runaway railway in Toontown, you know, they already mentioned that. I, I think it's more so they're going to look at the next five, ten years. So if they do announce a fifth gate for Walt Disney World, it's not going to say, oh, well, here are the specifics for that park. It's this is what we're looking forward to for the future. Right. And we're guaranteeing you that there's going to be a fifth gate for Walt Disney World. That's the kind of announcements that I feel that they're going to have at the parks this, uh, for this expo. Well, and it's appropriate. It's appropriate. I mean, you're talking about the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company. Um, you're going to want to go big. You're going to want to go big. They can't. And this is I touched upon this earlier in the video, but Disney has, at least for me personally, and everyone's mileage varies, you know. But for me personally, Disney has a history of disappointing at these expos and these conventions. And it's not just D23. It's Star Wars Celebration. It was even Destination uh d a few months ago a lot of people were disappointed with what came out of that you know 
um, in terms of announcements. So th this is the 100th anniversary of the studio. They have to go hard with it. They have to bring us really, really big headliner news. You know, like you said, they can't just announce these little things. They got to really go hard. Fifth gate would be something um, that would be massive and that would be appropriate considering that universal is building Epic universe. You know, that would be kind of their answer to the Epic universe competition down the road. They got to go big like this. They have to go big. They can't just kind of punt this one. Um, you know, and, now and especially since they dropped the ball with the 50th anniversary for Walt Disney world, which I know at some point, you know, it's not really Disney's fault due to the unforeseen circumstances. You know, they had to make do what they did, but they still could have done something a little bit more creative with Walt Disney World's 50th. Right. That's a major milestone. And I think that they were just leaning more towards, you know, the merchandising, you know, just to capitalize on the 50th, not the actual celebration itself. So I think that this could be Disney's opportunity to get the fans back in their grasp of saying, hey, you know what, for a major milestone like this, we can deliver. Right, right. Yeah, that would be massive. That would be absolutely massive. If they were to do that, Disneyland forward announcement and the fifth gate of Walt Disney World. That, that's, that's, all that. you need. that's all you would need. Those right. two announcements alone, you would have the, the audience's complete undivided attention. The whole arena would go nuts. Yeah. And that, that would be perfect for the parks panel. That that would, that would. Um Here's one thing, though, that concerns me, and this might be a little bit of I might be digressing a little bit. I just want to kind of kind of throw this out there because you're more of a Florida guy. Um, does it concern you? The addition of a fifth gate at Walt Disney World where because at Walt Disney World. Every park there right now has issues, right? Like there's it needs some TLC. Adding a fifth gate, do you worry that they're spreading it a little too thin in terms of resources? In terms of, are, do you worry that the parks that are there now are are it's gonna, they're going to have to wait even longer to get that TLC if they do go forward with with a fifth gate, or are you not too concerned with that? Well, and that's why I kind of made that assumption as a little bit far fetched because if you do look at the like, if you like the kind of like. Uh, break everything down and, and sort of cherry pick everything like to like down to the nitty gritty. A fifth gate still would be a challenge for Walt Disney world because you already have four parks. Yeah. And just because you have four parks, you know, there's still things that are lacking in those parks, animal kingdom, beautiful uh, landscape. I mean, j just to walk around that park is is just beautiful. The the sights, the sounds, the smells. Um, and I'm not talking about the animals, folks. <laughs> that <laughs> that it's it's not what you call still. Even with Pandora, the world of Avatar, it's yeah. still not a full day park. You only right. have with Expedition Everest being done right now for the refurbishment. They only have, I think, like five attractions. That's it. Right. So, and if you go early enough, and especially if you can get on Flight of Passage and the Navi River Journey, the, the rest of them are practically like a cakewalk. So you can be yeah. done with Animal Kingdom if you go like at rope drop. You could be done by like one o'clock, one thirty, and and y y you know your day at Animal Kingdom is done. And then if you have a, a like a, a, par a multi day ticket, like if you're there for a long period of time. You only really need, if you wanted to go back on those rides to, you know, relive that moment, you only need like one or two days at Animal Kingdom. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering, even though it would be like a big announcement, yeah. it, it, that's why I kind of leaned more towards, I wonder if they're going to have a major expansion with the parks that they already have, because some of the parks, they, they need it. They need it. And I think that might be... I think the fifth gate would, would definitely have more of a punch in terms of like the expo and, and getting on the, the, you know, the front page news of all of all the outlets and everything. But I think that in terms of like what's good for the resort, I, I think expanding and adding to what we already have is probably the best option because you got, the, you know, Epcot needs love. Um, yes. Probably even after this whole renovation is done there, it still needs some love. Um, Hollywood studios needs love. Like 
there's a lot to work on, you know? So I think that might be the better option. And and you would still get, you would still pack a punch. Like if they were to announce oh, like a, a, a new, a new pavilion at world showcase, I think that would really excite a lot of people, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think if they would mention a fifth gate, as I said, I think it would be more so like a down the road sort of thing. Right. They are confirming to say, Hey, you know what? We are going to do a fifth gate. We're not going to announce any, details on it yet but in the future for the next 100 years you will be getting a fifth gate at walt disney world but let's focus on what we're working on now sort of that, thing. that would be smart that would be smart that would be kind of like the disneyland forward approach yeah. you know in a lot of ways where it's like it's happening um but it's gonna take a while but it's happening you know get ready you know yeah. now, now in terms of the general because we're gonna hear i think we're gonna hear a lot of news about this 100th anniversary of the walt disney company you know, yeah. and we're going to hear a lot of news and not just connect to the parks. I mean, I think it's oh, going to yeah. be a lot of stuff going on. This is a, this is a, a company wide celebration in terms of that company wide celebration outside of the parks. Mm -hmm. What are you expecting to hear? What, what do you, what kind of stuff do you think we're going to hear in regards to this 100th? I think Disney, especially because Disney is punching it hard with Disney plus. I right. think we're going to hear a lot and I mean a lot of content that's going to be released on Disney Plus to, to promote this 100 years. I think yeah. now would be the time. And I hope Disney does this. And Disney, please, I know you're listening. So please take every word I say <laughs> that everyone in, in Disney Plus, you know, they're giving us originals. They're giving us, you know, this content material. But I'm right. seeing a lot online and on social media that people are looking for the original nostalgic classic shows and, and movies. And what better way for Disney Plus to like unload all that content for the 100 years of the Walt Disney Company? You know, put on all the stuff that was part of the 100 years. Right. Like, I want to see. And I know a lot of people may not even remember these, but I mean, as far as I do, I, I, <laughs> I used to watch Dumbo Circus <laughs> as the original uh, Disney Channel show. Yeah. I me used too. To me watch, too. Uh, Pooh Corner. Yeah. You know, I watched all that. So that's just a small part of right. adding those little perfections in that was part of the one the first 100 years of the company and then of course you got all the classic mickey cartoons and actually there were rumors going around and i'm wondering if that's going to be part of it that they were going to add the oswald the lucky rabbit cartoons on there uh, that wouldn't surprise me that would be very cool they need to do that i completely agree with you they need to they need to completely open the vault and and just com just throw everything onto Disney Plus and just go just go all out for the 100th. I would also love to see because I think Disney Plus one of my favorite things on Disney Plus right now in terms of the new content are the documentaries. You know, kind of diving into the behind the scenes. Like I loved, and I know you did too, the Howard Ashman documentary. Oh. It was it was a beautiful beautiful doc. Um, I want to see more stuff like that. You know, more stuff like the Imagineering story. Uh, diving into the company and the, and the behind the scenes stuff. And, well, the and, I think, and I think with the Imagineering story, again, just rumors that there's in talks that there's possibly going to be a season two. Wow. And I can actually somewhat believe that because of everything that the world went through within the past two years. Oh yeah. That was a challenge for them. Right. You know, so I would love to see their journey of how, like, when everything started up to now to get, like, up on their feet. I would love to see that behind the scenes. That would be very interesting. That would. I would I would love that. I would love that. So there's a lot they can do, and I think they will do with Disney+. Plus Because right now, Disney+, Plus is the bell of the ball. It's, yeah. it's what completely dictates what the stock price does or doesn't do. Um, when, it, when they disappointed with the subscriber numbers last quarter, the stock started a tank it's all about disney plus um they're gonna they're gonna go all out i think with disney plus um in terms of like other stuff i think we're probably gonna hear disney loves to do theme songs for yeah, their yeah. anniversaries at least for the parks they they did it with disneyland's 50th they, they like to do those theme songs i think we'll, we'll, we'll probably will see some sort of 100th anniversary theme song um, something along those lines. I think we're going to get a lot of news in regards to the merchandising stuff with the 100th. Absolutely. That's 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 a, that's a given. You know what? 
I just thought of it right now. It makes me wonder that after the fact that they sell as many expo tickets as they can, because technically this is still a trial base, you know, they don't really know how many tickets they're going to sell for this expo because it's the first one back. And, you know, I wonder after they sell as many expo tickets as they will, if they make a premium price on Disney Plus for those days that you can go on for subscribers, pay that premium price. And it live streams the expo right into Disney Plus. Uh, that would be incredible. That would be incredible. Live streaming the, the expo would be amazing. Live TV on um, on Disney Plus would be a game changer. Um, if you can do live TV, like if you can have, like, look, Disney owns a lot. You know, they own ABC. You know, they, they, they own all these entities, right? To, to have live TV, a live TV option. Uh, would be pretty incredible. Yeah, that that's it. That would be a game changer, George. That would be an absolute game changer, you know? And I wouldn't be surprised too. Like, you know, in 2019, that expo, you can go and you can sign up for Disney Plus for three years. I know I did it and you I did it too, right? Yep, the three I years. I, I'm still going strong on it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. I've, I've loved the platform. I will definitely resubscribe, um, you know, when, when my time is up. But um, I wouldn't even be surprised if they offer like, like like deals like that uh, like on the expo floor like hey you know what for new subscribers if you sign up now you know you can get like three years and it's for like a really low rate or, you know so i don't know we'll see. I mean, hell even for pre-existing subscribers if they want to do that deal again and give me another three years i'll give them the money up front <laughs> yeah me too absolutely i've been happy with disney plus i've been really really happy with it um i think we will eventually see more adult content. I think that JPEG is working to get, and I know there's been rumors in the trade Hollywood trades about this, but JPEG has been working to get um, more adult content on there and have it like kind of behind parental controls, like a Hulu tile or something like that. I would support that. I know that's a little controversial with some fans, but um, I think as long as you give parents the option to sort of, you know, like you have a young, you have a young, a young yeah. kid, right? Um, yeah. So if for, for him, you might, maybe Disney plus will give you the option to like, you know, remove the Hulu tile under his log, a login, right. Or something yeah, like I, that. I believe that they have a, um, a kid friendly option that you could create an account for your child right. and it'll only have the, um, the appropriate shows, movies, and, and, uh, specials that only a child can, uh, watch through the, of what Disney calls um, what is appropriate for, for young kids. Yeah. Yeah. Just give parents that control that option. Um, cause that's one of the things with Disney plus that I love the platform, but when it comes to stuff that's more adult, uh, that's when I'm leaving Disney plus and going to things like Hulu, going to things like Netflix. Like I, I've been like, we were binge watching for like a month now that show Ozark it's on Netflix. It's not family friendly at all, but see, I stopped watching Disney plus stuff to watch that. Like if I can have my adult stuff, my detective dramas, you know, all that, you know, all that stuff on Disney plus on with a Hulu tile, I would leave Disney plus a lot less than I do now. So it would be a smart option. I think they should definitely, and I, I think they even have the, the bundle. They have the Disney plus the Hulu right. and the ESPN bundle. So if they just, yeah, if they just add everything onto one streaming, even though they're, kind of separate entities but if they can add a connection portal so to speak to them that you would only have to just go through one streaming service for one price that that i'd be okay with that yeah me too i'd be i'd be down for that it'd be interesting it's gonna be a big expo um it's gonna be a big expo i hope disney doesn't drop the ball though because like i said before yeah. like I, I get disappointed at these at these conventions a lot with the announcements. Um, I go in thinking like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and then the announcements never quite met, except for a few cases like the, the 2015 Expo, D23 Expo in 2015 when they did Galaxy's Edge. I was super it met my expectations. Uh, Star Wars um, celebration in 2015 when they debuted the Chewy Were Home trailer and they gave us the Rogue One announcement. Oh, yeah. My expectations. Yeah. <laughs> that was epic it was epic yes but a yeah, lot I love of those epic moments and believe it or not like i was contemplating like about going back and forth of going to this expo and then i don't know why i mean i could be wrong but usually when i get my feelings like i get these certain feelings that 
um, um, like that something, gut instinct, something like exciting or, or positive, but then sometimes that's just the tequila talking. But <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it it, it works. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this, Bob Chapek. Yes, right, Bob Chapek, everyone's favorite CEO. Yes, um, he did not go to Destination D. He backed out last minute. Now there, now we heard it was because he was going to Bob Iger's farewell party. We've also heard rumors that it was because he didn't want to get booed on stage. Now, right. it would be odd if Chapek did not show up to the expo because this is a big event. Destination D yeah. is a small event. Can yeah. all be considered. Expo, the CEO is, should honestly be required. And honestly, he can't really say if there it was an excuse. There is no excuse to mix, miss the expo. Right. Really and Right. And especially this one, that's going to be giving us some information on the 100th anniversary stuff. It's a big, big milestone. Oh, and, if it any, and if it has any of the news that we're talking about today, I really think that he would feel confident that they, you know, that they won't boo him off the stage, you know, if they do this correctly. And honestly, even if that wasn't the case, no one should be booed off the stage. I mean, us as Disney fans, as a community, there's no need for that. Whether you like a person or you think that they fit the shoes of something or not, there's no need for booing and name calling. And that's, that's just not right regardless. No, it's not okay. And I, I made a video on this uh, back in November with the destination D thing when the, all that, all those rumors were circulating about him avoiding it because of the fans. And a lot of fans were sort of saying like that makes JPEG look bad. I'm like, well, not really. It kind of makes the fans look bad. Like, yeah. The fact that the CEO of the company is concerned about getting on stage because he doesn't want to get harassed, basically, on stage, looks bad on us. You know, look, you don't have to like Chapek. He doesn't have to be your favorite guy. You can totally disagree with everything he's done. But when he's on stage, you just you respect that moment and you just you don't you don't have to clap. You just just respect the person on stage enough not to not to heckle them, you know, exactly. and. I don't know. I think it looks bad on us as a fandom when, when, when people do that. I think that uh, there's other ways to show your disapproval. You vote with your wallet. You take the, the park surveys, stuff like that. Booing him on stage makes us all look like a bunch of immature children. Yeah, it really does. And it's like, that's not what Walt would want. That's no. not what he created his world for. His, it's, and, and you can never be fully satisfied. You know, you right. can't satisfy every single person. And I find that very contradicting when a lot of people say, like, for instance, speaking of just any CEO for whatever company you're talking about, that they say, oh, I would take anybody over this CEO, anybody over this person. And then when they leave and you get the new person and then you bitch and gripe about them, it's like, well, I could take anybody over this person. It's like, <laughs> you know, yeah, no one's going to be 100% satisfied in any given time. No, they won't. And Disney's the biggest it's ever been in terms of the size of the company. And you're never going to have somebody that's going to be 100% perfect with every, every corner of the company. You're always going to have something, even Bob Iger, as much as people loved him, there were things he did that people didn't like. Chapek, it's going to be the same thing. So, you know, I, I think that people are just going to have to understand that. And it, it's never going to be perfect. It, it, it never. And here's the thing too. I did a video yesterday on it. Did you see that Michael Eisner, his comments? Yes, I was actually just going to bring that up. I mean, I think when you have a past CEO that also approves of somebody what, you know, is doing now in the present and possibly for the future, I mean, I think that's a little bit telling. <laughs> well, yeah, and well, and it's, look, now you have two CEOs that, that, uh, that, that, that support JPEG in this role. You have Bob Iger because he hand selected JPEG. JPEG wouldn't even have the position if it wasn't for Bob Iger. Correct. So he obviously supports it. And you have uh, Michael Eisner now who came out and said that JPEG was, was, was pretty brilliant when he worked with him. And not only do I support JPEG, but I hired him <laughs> is what he said, you know, essentially yeah. he doubled down. Um, so it, it is, it, it, it is good to see that, Michael Eisner and Bob Iger are are supportive of this man. And and they know him more than we do. Like as fans, we don't really know. They work with they work or they worked with him on a daily basis. The ins and outs with him. They know his mindset. They know what kind of executive he is. 
So they know better than we do as fans. We're on the outside looking in. We can only and, make assumptions. And really, this is going to be the first, not even just the first expo, but the first like start of the year with Bob Chapek going solo right. as CEO. You know, right. now that as 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 you, I'm going to quote you, uh, Big Daddy Iger isn't there anymore. Right. So it's like I would really like to give him a chance and really see what he can do as CEO just himself. Right. Yeah, no, me too. Me too. And this is JPEG's time to – to he's, he's not going to win over everybody. There's going to be people in the fandom that will hate him. He could – he could lower the, the the magic key prices down to a dollar a year, and there people will still hate him. That you know, there's some people that will just will never be on board. But this is, expo is an opportunity to at least win some people over. Get on stage, just be yourself. Just be try to be personable and and get out there, make the audience laugh, and, and win some people over. This is his opportunity to do that. The last thing he should do, if JPEG, if you're watching, if your team, if your team is watching, the worst thing you could do is to hide from the fans at the expo. You have to make an appearance and you yeah. have to go out there and try to win people over. You can't just go into hiding, you know, because and that's then a, people will know they have the better of him. Yeah, uh, that it that, you know, oh, you know, he's he's cowardly. He's, you know, what kind of CEO hides from the fan? You, you know, yeah, it does make me wonder it non discreetly that during the parks presentation, if Chapek and Damaro come out together. Oh, because then it would be harder to boo because then you'd yeah. be booing tomorrow. That's smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's smart he they, they might he he or or maybe even not it could be tomorrow because he's he's a really loved guy amongst the fans but which i won't even get into that i think that's a little bit overdone but i'm not going to get into that in this video Absolutely. but um and but and, and I know we're kind of going a little bit off the topic but the one last comment i have to say to that sure. is every time when it comes to the parks it's always chapex name that gets brought up right and and no discretion to Josh, great guy, friendly guy, people person, awesome. But he is running the parks division. So I know. some of that has to come on to him as well. Well, I just think it's kind of hypocritical. And again, we're digressing, but why not? It is a casual show, so why not? Um, I, I Look, when Bob Chapek was head of the parks – and something when when there were when if something bad had like bad decisions were made, Bob Chapek got the blame. It wasn't Bob Iger who was CEO; it was Chapek. He ran the park. He got the blame. Suddenly now, though, it's like okay, so now Chapek is the CEO, and Demaro's the head of the park. So you would think that Chapek would be not to blame, just like Iger wasn't to blame, right? And it would be Demaro getting all the heat and yeah. the criticism, but it's not. They're still blaming Chapek. So that's why it's hard for me to take a lot of the fan stuff seriously because it's like, they're not consistent at all. And, yeah. And it makes me wonder like in a fan base sense that it's not really about the announcements or the disappointment. It's because that tomorrow is more of a people person, like right. focus down on your level. So it's like, they're taking that mentality and saying, you know, men, excuse me, mentality and saying that, Oh, well, Josh is a, you know, despite of what's going on, he's still, you know, walking the parks. He's still, you know, taking pictures with selfies with fans and he's greeting people where Che Peck doesn't, you know, so let's let's blame him because he's the he's the sourpuss, so to speak. Yeah, I know it, it. A lot of this is personality and 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 some people might not even realize it that they're doing it, but it is. Um, yeah. If tomorrow was a CEO making the same decisions that Chapek's making, I think he would get a lot less heat because he's more likable. He's charismatic. He's good looking. He's got the great smile, the whole thing. Chapek isn't exactly a looker and they don't like his personality. So he gets more heat directed at him. But um, yeah, but at the end of the day, though, I think we both agree. Yeah, Chapek has to make an appearance. He has to try to win over fans at this expo. And I think he will. I think he will. I think he will definitely tr um, try his best. He's never going to be Bob Iger. He's not going to be charismatic like Bob, but I do think he will try his best to come out there and try to win some some of the fandom over. And it would be the smartest move for him to do. Absolutely, I agree. You know? And then, real quick, you know, to close this out, we have to we have to bring this up. That Walt Disney's plane, his mm -hmm. private plane, will be making an appearance at the expo. This is interesting. 
Yes. And this is what kind of drew my attention to the expo, believe it or not, with the, the announcement that came is for them to take his whole entire plane and literally move it cross country all the way over just for this expo because of what the representation of it. And I love how they're incorporating the past and right. they're incorporating Walt. And I think that's where the company is kind of diluting its product because it's, it's just all about the money. It's all about the corporate. It's all about this. We also have to add into what makes Disney Disney. Right. What makes this a very unique company is the man who created it. And it bring it that legacy to the expo with his very own private plane. That drew my attention to say, whoa, if they're doing this, just with the announcement of tickets going on sale January 20th, yeah. what are some of those announcements that are actually going to be at the expo itself? And this, this, that kind of intrigued me. Yeah, no, absolutely. And th this is really so perfect for the expo. And especially, like you said, this year with the 100th anniversary, bringing it back to Walt, the man who started it all. Um, I'm very curious how they execute this in terms of like, Will will there will there be like an outdoor area where you can where you can go and see this plane, or will it be in the actual like building if they can fit it? I don't know. I don't know how logistically they're gonna do this. Um, I know that the Anaheim Convention Center is a huge huge complex, mm -hmm. but man, this is a it's a private jet. I mean, <laughs> it, it would be pretty epic if it was indoors, I, and you know. But we'll yeah, see. I mean, I would love to see it actually in the the um like in the uh convention center i again i don't yeah as you said i don't know how they're going to do that but i wonder if they're going to have it as like a placement outside um where you could actually like have an individual line like if you want to have your picture or selfie taken in front of the plane yes um that would be really cool maybe they'll let people inside you got to queue up you know and you yeah. got to queue up and they let a few people cool. at a time Obviously, they would have a Disney cast member with those people inside there the whole time to make sure that no one uh, tries to damage. You know what I'm saying? You got to have somebody there supervising yeah. sort of. But um, I could see them doing that too, you know? And, yeah. you know, maybe That'd even be really cool because, I mean, we all have seen Walt's plane and we've seen like photographs, but I don't think anyone other than, you know, Walt, his family, his, his people, his confidants that was actually in the plane. So to actually allow guests to step on board oh that would be wouldn't that be cool so this is going to be i think this is going to be an exciting d23 i think that they have to go all out i think we both agree on that this is it, especially with the 100th anniversary i want to see some cool stuff for that i really do this is a like, big i, I want to see stuff that i can't even think of right now and, and then when you see it and you're like oh why couldn't i have thought of that that's genius you know I, that's the kind of stuff i want to see i don't want to go in there and seeing all this like so, sort of like hand me down diluted mm. ideas and saying oh we're going to uh, kite tails 2.0 <laughs> hype <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, I don't want to see that either. I don't want to see that either. I, this has to be a big celebration, big announcements, go all out, not just for the parks. We're talking Disney Plus, we're Absolutely. talking the studios, we're talking everything. They have to go all out with this. Um, and, you know, I, I think they will. I, I'm cautiously optimistic. I think they will. If they're ever going to deliver at an expo, this is the one they're going to do it at. They're going to deliver, you yeah. know. And Star Wars and Marvel rarely ever disappoint so i could imagine what they have on slate for those announcements yeah it'll, it'll be interesting to see what, what what they bring to the table especially marvel kevin feige is like he knows how he knows how to do these conventions i mean marvel usually wins the day any convention they go to marvel wins the day they're they're, they're always kick ass when it comes to this stuff so i'm sure feige will bring it and bring it hard um it's gonna be great i think it's gonna be a lot of fun so um We'll just have to wait and see. Now, when is the expo exactly? I know it's like, is it August? It's oh, September, uh, September 9th through the 11th. Okay, September 9th through the 11th. So we got a little while. We got a little while. I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more as we get a little closer, but yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be interesting. Yeah, because they did mention um, that there's going to be more news in the coming weeks 
of that people who are gold members, there's going to be more intel of what you're going to be getting at the expo. So I find that kind of interesting. That is interesting. And that's actually real quick before we close it out, but that's interesting that it's, it's September. That's a little later than usual. I mean, usually the expo from what I understand is usually like August. The um, very first, the very first expo in 2009 was in September, but I believe okay. that was the only time it was in September. Then they moved it to the summer. But again, it makes me wonder if they moved it to September for this particular reason, because September is the 18th month that it said within that contract about Disneyland forward. They want they want to make sure that it gives them enough time to get that approval and make that announcement. Yeah, I w that's where I was going with it, too. I think that that bodes well for Disneyland forward, um, that it's so late you know, September. I mean, if it was like July or something, there was a chance it might not, there, there would be no announcement, but the fact that they're waiting till September, it's a good chance. It's a good chance, you know? So we'll and see. Definitely for Disney to redeem themselves as far as like with everything that's been going on, you know, it's been kind of, you know, on the, the lower bond lately, you know, with, you know, expectation wise, you know, with Walt Disney world's 50th and everything. So, I mean, for the 100th, you know, anniversary of the Walt Disney Company and to promote that that huge milestone with this expo that has been gone for how many years because of the uh, the pandy and everything. This is Disney's way of redemption. It, it is. It's redemption. It's also kind of a reset um, for Chapek if he wants it to be. Um, he can he can come out there and we like we said we can he can make 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 some gains with the fandom if he does it right. Um, it's a big opportunity for JPEG. It's a big opportunity for the company. So hopefully they, they deliver because I think and if I, they do, it would pay off. Yeah. And I think honestly that this will definitely have to come into tell, especially after of what's going to await in March for on March 1st, when the galactic star cruiser opens. And oh, I think yeah. that will detect of saying, which, which direction are we going here? And I think, as you said, that would be the perfect opportunity for Disney to do a reset because I hate to be a Debbie Downer or a negative Nancy, but I, I think on March 1st with the Star Cruiser, it's going to be a disaster. It, it, it will. And we'll, we're going to do a video very soon on that with yeah. our buddy Dre. Um, yeah, we're going to do a video on that very soon to kind of break all that down. So keep an eye out for that. That will be coming soon. But um, it's going to be interesting. Very, very interesting. But George, Mr. Family Man, I want to thank you so, so much for coming on today, brother. Thank you for having me. It's always, always a pleasure. Love doing this with you. Yeah, me too. Me too. So if you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media. Absolutely. You can find me on YouTube uh, at Disney Family Man 23. Um, I will be uh, getting some videos out. Sorry for the delay, folks. I know I keep on saying that, but they're coming soon. Uh, you can find me on Instagram under the same name, Disney Family Man 23, on Twitter at Disney George, and of course on Orange Grove 55's channel with Citrus Corner, which we always have new content coming up for you uh, on more so closely on a weekly or bi weekly basis. So definitely yeah. check out for that. Yeah, yeah. We actually recently did a video, a, a, a video with, with Dre for a Citrus Corner. Uh, like an hour or more and we yeah. dove into a lot of stuff so check out the playlist for citrus corner our latest video was really really great in terms of like talking about if the 50th has been a flop or not it was a good it was a really good conversation it was so, a really good in-depth conversation it was really a good one yeah but thank you all for watching this episode of orange grove 55 where we kind of dived into our expectations in regards to the d23 expo coming in september uh what do you guys think what what are you expecting for this expo what do you want to see for this expo um it's a bit it's a big one this is a milestone 100 years so disney has to deliver so we'll have to see but comment down below we'd love to hear from you thank you all so so much for watching and as always have a wonderful wonderful day Thank you.